Hello all. Uh, this is one I teased about yesterday making a video and uh, I'm just going to do kind of a short one, a little once over. This uh, was my uncle's uh, Model 141 Remington Game Master in 35 Remington. And uh, she's got some some love. It's been, <laughs> been used. Uh, but uh, just a cool old rifle. And uh, this is kind of one of the, the really unique things that people uh, have been talking about whenever I've been looking this up a little bit. Um, these spirals are intended to keep the uh, pointed bullets from making contact with the primer of the, uh, the round behind it, or in front of it, sorry. And uh, this is pretty neat that when you uh, slide the action, I don't know if I can get it to slide, The whole tube slides with under the barrel, and uh, to to get that to release, this is the bolt release up here, and uh, she's just as smooth as anything. Now, if I can get a second to flip this around, <laughs> kind of silly, but I think one of the neatest things here is the the mock shell head. Uh, embedded in the in the receiver marked with the, the caliber and uh, I'm guessing if what I looked up was correct the two little letter codes there on the barrel this was made in October of 1937 and uh, she's got a, a sling added to it that I'm sure wasn't intended to be there and uh, this interesting little knob is the uh, the takedown knob if you unscrew that you're supposed to be able to take this uh, completely apart but I don't know when or if it ever was taken apart and uh, when I took it out last night it would not come apart and I did not want to beat on it or or make any any trouble with it so uh, loading port is down here in the bottom and uh, ejection of course is on the other side this is uh, outfitted with a marbles flip up peep sight which I'm also coming to understand is pretty desirable. And uh, it's hard to see through. That little tiny aperture is really tiny. Now it does unscrew, so I'm assuming that maybe there were others that would, uh, would go into it. But uh, I don't think we have any of those. Now this 35 Remington cartridge is completely new to me as well. And uh, she looks like she's going to be a thumper. Um, I have not shot this yet. I might try to take it down to the range a little bit later, and I'll take you along with me. If you want, uh, you know, for comparison, that's a 308, and uh, that's a 223. But this thing is just uh, just some kind of old school cool, and uh, got an old sling on it that I'm going to um, sort of dissect to maybe recreate it. I like these old old style uh, the little hook attachments i have some new modern ones i want to try to put on a, a leather strap and see how we can make it work but uh yeah this just an interesting old gun at least in in my opinion game master model 141 so hopefully we'll get it to the range and i'll try to take you along Now, uh, this is another uh, gun that I might take to the range today. Um, this was also my uncle's. This is a Herders uh, 357. And uh, I don't know what, if any, model name. Uh, just says Herders 357 caliber. And uh, <laughs> you might notice there's a little something missing here on this single action. And uh, that would be the extractor tube. And the extractor tube is missing because it's in a whole bunch of pieces here in this baggie. Uh, it seems that Uncle was a, uh, a reloader. And there is some suspicion that maybe he might have run some really hot loads through this thing. And uh, <laughs> that the extractor was a, a casualty of that. Now it's just made out of some sort of uh, cast, cheap, uh, very thin metal. Or uh, maybe even some of that powdered metal pressed. So 
I don't think that it would have withstood anywhere near the, the kind of shock that heavy 357 Magnum loads would provide. But uh, I'm pretty confident that this, uh, the thickness of this barrel, I mean, she's a beefy, beefy uh, gun. And the, the cylinder, everything all looks in order. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run some light 38 loads through it just to test it out and uh, hope it doesn't explode in my hand. <laughs> and just to see how it does, I won't put any 357s through it for a little bit. And uh, I did look and I can get a replacement extra extractor for it. Um, they're, they're not cheap and there's probably not a lot of them, but I'll, uh, I'll have a, a go at it. Well, since I'm set up to do so, uh, this is another firearm that was, uh, brought back after Thanksgiving this year. This is, uh, another one that I'm just sort of caretakering because, uh, this was my dad's rifle, um, Remington Game Master in uh, 308 and uh, this one is actually supposed to go to my nephew he doesn't have anywhere to put it right now and uh, he's not really able to do much hunting because he's traveling quite a bit so I'm gonna hold on to this for him and just make sure it's clean and uh, he told me it's uh, hitting a little bit four inches left so I might take this with me down to the range as well and uh, just put a round or two through it and see where it hits on the target but uh, this is really nice old rifle um, we've got, uh, raised rings on so that you can use both the iron sights if you want to, or, um, the scope. And, uh, it's an old red field scope. It's pretty clear. It's got a nice, uh, nice reticle in it. And, uh, this gun just, just is sweet. And, uh, I would have been happy with, uh, with having it myself, but my nephew got to hunt quite a bit with my dad the last couple of years when I didn't get to. And uh, this one means something to him, so I want to keep hold of it, keep it good shape, and whenever he's ready for it, or maybe someday when he's got a a youngster to hunt with him, that uh, he'll be able to take it out. So just wanted to share that one real quick, and uh, I guess maybe we'll be off to the range. is a thumper. Uh. So I couldn't see those little orange dots for anything, but I could see the paper and I was aiming center top and uh, that's three shots. Not uh, the greatest group, but with uh, iron sights with an old rifle I've never fired before, I guess I'm all right with that. I'm going to put a few through the, uh, the old 308 of Dad's. We'll take a look at that. All right, we got uh, the old 308 pump out. And uh, <laughs> kind of glad I did it off camera because I got a little choked up as I took it out of the case. But... Uh, we're going to put a couple of rounds through it just to see where it's hitting. And, uh, well, we'll take a look at the target afterwards.
All right, from what I can see down here, not too much to complain about. So the uh, 35 rem was the, uh, the top target and uh, not too terrible. The 308 was the bottom target and uh, I guess Andrews is right, it is hitting a little bit left. I'm not gonna tinker with the, the sights at all. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I would hunt with it and uh, I wouldn't be too concerned. <clears throat> So, probably shouldn't, but uh, I'm going to give this a little try. This is a Herder's 357 that was my uncle's, and uh, there's some question as to whether he might have put some of his hot reloads in this and uh, as to its fitness, but it looks pretty solid, and uh, it's beefy as hell. One of the concerns is that the extractor is missing. Uh, it's not missing. It's in a thousand pieces in the uh, in a baggie on the on the workbench so I'm not gonna put any 357 loads through it right now but I'm uh, I'm feeling okay with putting some light factory load 338 specials so we're gonna we're gonna give this a shot and see how it goes She seems fine. No, uh, no problems. Uh, don't even need the extractor. I'm gonna go ahead and run a couple more through it. not a speed strip this is a slow strip <sighs> now that I'm not too worried about it blowing up in my hand <laughs> I'll, I'll try to aim a little bit better that yeah and they all shook right out I guess this one's gonna be a, a good one after all all right let's go take a quick look at the target This uh, bottom one was my first round, a little bit flinchy because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And uh, these are my last five, not too terrible at, uh, at 10 yards. I'll take it. Uh, but we'll do a little bit more about this later. I uh, often apologize for the noise whenever I'm shooting about a highway being nearby. Well, you can see I'm standing down here at the target at the 20 or the 50 yard range and uh, that's my Jeep behind the, the shooting station and those trucks you see whizzing by behind, that is the Pennsylvania Turnpike and uh, that is why all the noise. So sorry about the, the noise in the background, sorry if I'm a little too hard to hear sometimes, but uh, this is my closest and easiest range to get to. Hey, thanks for coming along, been a good day at the range.